Come in. Hello, Doc. Hello, Fernando. Fernando, do you know why you're here? Well, I'm having some problems in school and my parents think you can help me some. Let's see. last reaction. You look pretty normal to me. Hmm. I'll ask you a couple of questions to see what your problem is. Okay. What is a Pepsi? Uh, I don't I think it's like a kind of soft drink. What is a kind? A kind of dog. Hmm. Um, one last question. Why is a stain here? Oh yeah, those kinds of um, sculptures that are like in the desert, Egypt. Fernando, you know what? The problem is not about what's in here. It's about what is not in there. Ignorance. I have a video that might help you. Oh please, doctor. body a perfect machine. They do so because some of the systems appear to be perfect. Today I'll be speaking to you about one of these systems, the digestive system. The main organs involved in this system are the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, and the pancreas. This system is vital to our body because it is the one in charge of carrying large food particles into energy, which we need to survive. It also absorbs other important nutrients, which help us to function properly. Now, you might be wondering how it is that this system works. Let me show you how to do it. The very first step in digestion is in the mouth. Here, the salivary glands produce the saliva, which is released in the mouth, in order to begin the chemical digestion and to lubricate the esophagus. The teeth in the mouth are in charge of the mechanical digestion. Let's see what happens in the mouth. The teeth smash the food, increasing the surface area of it. This is called mechanical digestion. This allows the digestive juices to mix faster with the food, and later it helps absorb the nutrients more efficiently. Here we can also see the saliva being secreted through the mouth and taking the first step into chemical digestion, where an enzyme, a point that speeds up chemical reactions, which is called amylase, does the task of breaking down any starch found on the food particles into simpler sugars called maltose. These, however, are not the simple units of sugar yet. After this, the food is swallowed and passes on to the esophagus. The two important parts of this step in digestion are the pharynx and the epiglottis. The pharynx plays a role in the respiratory system as well. But what it does in this system is to help push down the food with the circular muscles. The epiglottis closes down the way into the larynx when we swallow in order to prevent from food, any food or liquid to go into the lungs. Let's see what happens on the esophagus. Here, food is being pulled down into the stomach by peristalsis, the involuntary contractions of the muscle in the area of the esophagus. Let's move down to the stomach. Here, the peris mixed with gastric juices, and the final mixture of these two is called a chyme. Another function of the stomach is to kill all bacteria that enter it with hydrochloric acid. Once the chyme is ready, the pylorus and its thickening the pylori sphincter open up, allowing it to enter the duodenum. The duodenum is the beginning of the small intestine. Here the last breakdown processes take place. An enzyme which exists in the intestinal juices, the maltase, breaks down the maltose into simple enough sugars so that later they can be absorbed. Also, sodium bicarbonate is released here to neutralize the acids from the stomach. Let's see what happens in the ileum. At this point, every nutrient has been broken down into a form that we can absorb. Vitamins and minerals present were already in their simplest form, so they are not broken down any further. Here, hair-like structures called the villi slow down the passage of food and absorb the nutrients into the bloodstream, while even smaller hair-like structures are located on the villi, 
called the microvilli, increase the surface area through which the nutrients are being absorbed, making absorption more efficient. You may have noticed that there is something missing. This prayer had no proteins or fat. Some things in the stomach and the duodenum would have looked a bit different if this food consumed would have had these two. In the stomach, a powerful enzyme called the pepsin breaks large protein chains into smaller ones. Later, on the duodenum, another enzyme called peptidase breaks these proteins even further, turning them into amino acids. Also, fats are broken down by the bile and later on by the enzyme's lipase. Next step is the large intestine. All what is left now is an indigestible mass of waste and extra water. Here the extra water is removed. After that, the solid waste moves on to the rectum. Finally, the waste exits the body through the anal sphincter. So, to close it up, in the mouth, mechanical digestion occurs and amylase begins the chemical digestion by breaking down starch. And on the esophagus, food is carried down into the stomach by peristalsis. In the stomach, proteins are broken down, and bacteria are killed with hydrochloric acid. In the duodenum, maltose, proteins, and fats are broken down. Next, in the ileum, all these nutrients are absorbed. In the large intestine, what is removed from what is left, the waste, and in the anus, this waste is released through the sphincter. Oh! So much better. And this is the end of the journey of our friend. Well, we've seen how each of the parts of the digestive system works, the importance of each, how they interact with each other, and hopefully by now you're an expert in the digestive system. Till next time, folks. Well, so what do you think about the video? Well, it was pretty nice. I think it helped me a lot, Doc. It's good that you learn more about science. Yeah, indeed. I can see that. Well, good night, Fernando. Good night. See you. Peace. Stay young.